Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to take a look at this Yezu FTM3200DR 2 meter digital and analog transceiver. So the very first thing I'll do is a quick unboxing of the radio and then we'll go into an overview of the radio and its features and then I'll demonstrate some of the basic setup and programming. So feel free to skip through the video if you just want to see a certain topic. Before I connect the radio to the power supply, let's take a closer look at the radio itself. So of course we're taking a look at the front of the radio here. You can see we have the volume control, the display, the tuning dial, all of the function buttons here, the microphone connector, the power button is this red one, and on this radio of course we have a front facing speaker. As you can see here I've mounted the supplied bracket just for convenience to get it up off the desk. Okay, so taking a look at the back of the radio, over here you can see we have a data port, a data connector, we have the power pigtail, an external speaker jack, we have a fan mounted directly to the heat sink for cooling, and then over here of course is the SO239 jack for the antenna. And then taking a look at the bottom of the radio, of course we have the bracket in the way, but you can see that the bottom of this radio is all mostly an aluminum heat sink. There's an information nameplate here with the radio's model number and some FCC identifications and things like that. And it is stamped made in Japan, which is kind of surprising. I would have thought this thing would have been made in China. So overall, the radio has a rugged feel. Nothing feels loose or anything like that. Materials all seem like they're pretty decent quality. The top cover and the front bezel are, of course, plastic, but the rest of the radio's chassis appears to be aluminum. So the microphone supplied with the radio is Yezu's MH48. This is pretty much standard issue for all of their mobile radios, I believe. This is a pretty decent microphone. It's got backlit keys and some programmable function keys here. Of course, the push-to-talk switch on the side. It's got a post back here for mounting in a microphone hanger. And then on this side, there are switches to turn off the backlighting and lock the microphone if you want to do that. And then of course on top of the microphone are up-down buttons that can be used to scroll through the channels or initiate scanning. And of course just like many modern radios today this uses a modular RJ12 crimp-on jack which plugs into the main radio here on the front panel. The supplied power cord uses the standard issue L connectors which I happen to prefer over the power pole connectors that a lot of people are using today. The wire that they've chosen to use is 12 gauge, so nice heavy wire. You can also see that both the positive and negative leads of the power cord are fused with standard automotive style blade fuses here. And then taking a look at the stripped end of the wire where you would connect it up to your power source, you can see that they have pre-tinned the wire and that the wire itself is aluminum. I would have preferred copper wire here, but that explains why it's a little bit thicker than a lot of other radios. So let's get connected up to a power supply and go through some of the basic operation. As you can see, I've got the radio up here on my shelf ready to be powered up. Now I noticed in the quick start guide that the first time that the radio is powered up, it's going to ask for a call sign to be programmed in. And of course that's gonna be used with the C4FM digital mode that this is capable of. So I'll finish connecting the power and we'll power it up and go through that process. And also before we power it up, I'm gonna plug the microphone in just in case we need it. So as you can see here, it's prompting me to put in my call sign and telling me to push the VM key, so I'll do that now. So it looks like we have a cursor over here that we can control, and we'll just use the tuning dial to kind of scroll through the available characters. Once I have the character I want selected, I'll just hit the VM key to move to the right, and then I can pick the next character. And if you've made a mistake or you want to change the call sign that's in there, this of course is not my call sign, you just push the VM key again, and you can start over from the beginning. 
Once you have your call sign entered in the way that you want, then you push this key, the megahertz key, and hold it for a second to write it to memory. Now that my call sign is in, we're ready to start using the radio. And I almost forgot, we're going to need to connect an antenna to the radio as well, so I'll do that now. So I got my call sign in, and the radio is now in VFO mode and ready to go. So tuning frequencies in VFO mode is as easy as spinning the dial here, as you can see. Now, if you don't want to spin this thing forever and want to go up the band quicker, you can hit the megahertz key, and you can see that the megahertz register will flash and then you can tune up or down that way and then once you get to where you want to be you just hit the megahertz key again and then it goes back into tuning the kilohertz so while still in VFO mode you may be able to notice that as I've been tuning around the radio has been automatically putting in a plus or a minus up here to automatically set the standard repeater offset for North America so what that means is when we transmit the frequency will automatically shift down 600 kilohertz so that we can access the repeater. Now the one thing that it doesn't do, and it can't do of course, is program the CTCSS tone that is present on most repeaters. So the next thing I'll do is go ahead and program that in. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press and hold the setup key and you can see we go now into the setup menu. Now each item in the setup menu has a label and an index number associated over here. So in order to change the menu item, you just use the tuning dial to scroll through the options. You can go up or down to get to the item you want to get to. So in this case, I want to select and change the tone frequency. That's item number 42. So once I get there, I can push the setup key again to go into that menu item. So you can see by default it's set up to 100 hertz. I'm going to change it to 77, which is the tone for that repeater. Then I'll push the setup key again to write that to memory. So now that I've set a tone frequency, I now need to turn the tone generator on. And to do that, I'm back in the menu setting here. I'm going to scroll down to item number 39. So you can see I'm here at squelch type, which is index number 39. I'm going to push the setup key to enter into this item. So by default, the tone is off. Now I'll go through the other options we have by using the tuning dial. You can see the first one is tone, and that turns on the tone transmitter. That's actually what we want. And set that by pushing the setup key. And then I'll push and hold the setup key for over a second to get back to VFO mode. And as you can see here, the T is now present, indicating that the tone generator is active. So now we have everything we need to access a repeater in VFO mode. So I'll go ahead and key it up and see if we can access this one. This is <laughs> testing. Oh, thanks, Dick. Just trying out this new radio I got here that I'm going to throw in my car. I heard you mention the model of that radio. It's a Yaesu that includes Fusion, right? So I found a repeater in my area that is an FM and a C4 FM repeater. So I've gone ahead and programmed in the analog side of the repeater, just like I would have any standard analog repeater. And first what I'll do is I'll key up and test and see if I can hit this repeater in analog mode. Just a side note, this repeater is quite a ways from here. It's about 70 miles northwest or so from here. It's up on the highest point in Massachusetts, which is Mount Greylock. And of course, I'm in northeastern Connecticut. But this repeater is famous for having a big footprint throughout southern New England, so I should be able to hit it in analog mode without too much trouble. So next up you're going to see some clips from a rather lengthy conversation that I had between myself and three other stations. Now originally we started out just trying to test my radio, but one of the other stations was running a Yezu FT991A, and he was having trouble getting his automatic mode select to work, so the other stations were trying to help him with that along the way. So what I've tried to do is provide enough clips here to give you guys a gist of the conversation and what we were talking about, but also show a demonstration of both the FM and the digital portions of this radio, kind of show how it switches back and forth between them automatically, and let you guys hear what it sounds like when it does that. This is... <coughs> testing. K1 S S K P L 162.2 
So what I'll do now is I'll switch the radio into what Iezu calls AMS mode, which basically means that it'll automatically switch between digital and analog depending on what signal it receives. And I'll achieve that by pushing the DA button once. And you can see right now there is an F lit up to let us know that we are in FM mode, but this little icon down here that's blinking, this DN, lets us know that it is actually in dual watch mode. Station testing. Good afternoon. Yeah, the call is... The name is Rob, Romeo Oscar Bravo, and I'm actually down the road from you. I'm a little bit south of you. The radio I'm using here is a brand new Yezu FTM3200D. It's just a two meter radio, but it's got the digital, uh, the Yezu digital mode built in, and I was just about to switch over and try and see if I could hit this repeater on digital mode. I haven't tried that yet. I wanted to set it up and test it on the analog side first. So I may switch over to the digital mode here in a minute and see if it works. I have the 991A, which is, uh, also has the Fusion. If you want to switch to uh, digital, uh, uh, I'm doing nothing for a minute here, and uh, we'll see how you make it. Okay, so what should now happen is if I push the D to A key, it should put the radio in the automatic mode select. So you can see what's happened is this F has appeared on the screen and we've got this DN icon blinking. So what that means is the radio is currently in FM mode. You can see the two green lights showing that we're receiving FM analog. But the blinking icon lets us know that the radio is in AMS mode, and if it detects a digital signal, it should automatically switch between the two modes. If we push this again, this will go into straight digital mode, and you can see that the radio is receiving a signal, but it's not passing it. You can see the blue light is blinking, letting us know something is there on the analog side. And you can also see that the icon here is lit solid, letting us know it's in digital mode. But because the signal that's currently being received is not digital, it's blinking here to let us know that that's the case. So I'm going to go back over to the automatic mode. And then what I'll do is jump in here when these guys are done talking. This guy already said he'd test the digital mode with me, so once they're done with their conversation, we'll jump in on the digital side and see how it sounds. Okay, so now the repeater should cut over to digital, because these two guys are switching over to that mode. Are you guys hearing me on the digital side? Yes, I am. You sound 
fine to me, except I'm, I'm not a big fan of the sound of digital. I don't like the compression sound. But yeah, I hear you. Okay, very good. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of it either. This is my first digital radio. Just taking a crack at it here just to see what it's like. I'm I'm mostly an analog guy, but I figured I'd uh, I'd take the plunge here. This radio was cheap enough. But as far as the 991 issue goes, I wonder if you guys are dealing with some sort of a firmware version mismatch. You know, if one radio's got one version of firmware and the other's got a different, something along those lines. Well, my radio is about a is about I don't know a year newer than Doug, so it might be something to that. KWG, yes, I am here, and I just uh, I just got my 91, 991 back from Yesu. Uh, I had to have a final replaced, and they did a software uh, firmware upgrade. And uh, even though my book says 92 is the AMS menu, now on the radio it's number 90. It is, uh, it is menu 92. But I can't seem to get the thing to automatically switch according to what it receives. As long as I leave the AMS off and, I, and, and, and stay in C4 FM, everything's okay. But if I want to go into AM, I got to I got to switch to AM. You know, I mean to FM, uh, analog mode. Well, uh, yeah. So that's that's interesting. Uh, I don't know who said it might be a firmware issue, but it looks like it might be. Because my book uh, that came with a 991 says it's menu 92. But now that I got the radio back from Yesu, it's actually uh, menu 90. But it seems to be working fine. Uh, it's I'm, I'm using a um, an FTM 100 right now. But um, while you guys were talking, I, I turned the 991 on. It is set at uh, auto, and it seems to be working okay. Okay, to Okay, Well, well, Rob, I don't think I'm a, a lot of help to you. <laughs> you just got more problems than, uh, and you're and you're trying to just uh, try out that new rig. Anyway, I'm going to jump out of here, guys, and I'm going to go look in the manual a little bit and see if I'm doing something wrong. It could be operator error, fellas. Okay, I'm uh, I'm going to get out, and uh, you guys can carry on. This is N1 A N D. Analog. Okay. <laughs> Okay, since you switched over, mine was in automatic mode, so mine went back over to analog on its own. So, I don't know. <laughs> like I said, I'm just learning all this myself. Well, hey, listen, thanks again for the testing. I think I'm going to run along here. My wife's yelling for me upstairs. But uh, before I go, uh, do any of you mind if I post some snippets of this up on, uh, on YouTube here for the radio testing? I have a YouTube channel that I run, and some of my buddies might want to see this. I'm going to run along. I'm getting a high sign from upstairs. So thanks again, guys, for helping me test this out. 7-3 for now. So the conversation went on for a while after this, but I decided to stop it here. This is probably good enough for a demo for this video. If you're interested in learning how to program a memory frequency in this radio, I've made a separate video detailing that, and you'll find the link to it in the description below. So that's pretty much going to wrap things up for my overview of the Yaesu FTM3200D. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to leave a comment or subscribe, feel free to do that as well. And if you'd like to support my channel in another way, please consider visiting my Amazon store, which you'll find linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.